Hi everyone, welcome to Kuiper Labs. Um, in this episode we're going to be talking about this concept we call the molar volume of a gas. Okay, we've been talking about Le Chatelier's principle and the carbon dioxide equilibrium. And what we're going to be working towards in this is um, being able to use this concept to derive a value or to work out a value um, of the volume of one mole of any gas. So, we, But we've got to revisit some of our Year 11 concepts first to try and help make sense of it. Okay, so let's get into it. All right, so way back in, in Year 11, okay, we stated what we call Avogadro's hypothesis. Okay, so let's say we had containers of gas A and gas B. Okay, um, now, so that have the same volume. Okay, so what the Avogadro hypothesis said was that as long as we've got the same temperature and the gases are at the same pressure, okay, so they're pushing on the container with the same amount of force, that their motion is equal. So that's what our temperature and our pressure relate to. And we have the same volume um, equals this will have, so the, the same volumes of any two gases will have the same number of particles m. Okay? And so then what we also then said, we could kind of actually rephrase this a little bit. So that we said, all right, well, if I could, you know, so that's kind of, so, so Avogadro made that, that hypothesis way back when. Um, when deducing, being able to look at integer relationships in, in chemical reactions. So then what we then said was, all right, let's flip it around. If we've got two, the samples of two gases at the same temperature and pressure, and what we know is that if we can have the same number of particles of each gas, like if we, if we know that a sample of gas A and a sample of gas B have the same number of particles, we can then say that they will take up the same volume. Okay, so you can see that we've just flipped the direction around, but we're using this same principle. Now, what that means is that if I can get a specific number of particles of any gas, any two gases, they will have take up the same volume as long as the temperature and pressure are constant. So that means that if I can get, say, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, which of course represents one mole of particles, of any two gases, that they will still have the same volume. Okay, they will have a specific volume that relates to that number of particles, but that they will be the same. Okay, say, so, and what we what we talk about with this concept is we describe this as the molar volume. That is the volume of one mole of any gas. Okay, and now so what we know is that this is not some random principle and it's also not some random variable value. You know, the part of the, what we're looking at here is that if I could get a sample of any gases that I come across, maybe I could get a sample of helium in one container and a sample of carbon dioxide in another container. You know, so I could get something that's heavy, something that's light. I can get something that has large particles, something that has small particles. It does not matter. Um, is that one mole of any of these pairs of gases, any gas that I come with, like to compare will have the same volume. And so what we, we say is, right, well, we've said the same temperature and pressure, but we need to standardise that. Okay, so we have two sets of conditions that we talk about. Standard temperature and pressure, okay, just to remind you, which is 0 Celsius and um, 100 kilopascals of pressure, and room temperature and pressure, which is 25 Celsius and 100 kilopascals of pressure. Now, what we see, we don't go into in our course at, at this level, is that we could actually look at any set of conditions that we come across and be able to actually do conversions to say, all right, well, what if the temperature is 50 degrees Celsius? What if the pressure is 150 kilopascals? How could you actually can work out how much that volume that gas should take up then? And so we can do those sort of conversions. It's not some mystical relationship. But for us in, our, in the HSC course, we only consider these two sets of conditions. And so what we know is that, that at standard temperature and pressure, um, which is 100, they're the, the first set, and we have one value, and at room temperature and pressure, it's another value. Okay, so for standard temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas will take up 22... Uh, okay, so STP is 
22.71 litres for every one mole. And room temperature and pressure is 24.79 litres for every one mole. Okay, you can kind of just see it there. I realise it's kind of going off the edge there a little bit. Okay, let me perhaps, let me quickly rewrite that. Okay, so molar volume um, STP, we have 22.71 litres for every one mole. And at RTP, we have 24.79 litres for every one mole. Okay, which kind of makes sense that we had an increased, we, we know from thinking back to way back when, that as we increase the temperature, that then it will take up more space, that there's more energy in order to maintain that, that pressure, that then we need to, the volume will expand. Okay, that is as that temperature is proportional to volume. Okay, um, so we need to be able to be confident in using these values um, in calculations. Okay, so I'm quickly going to go through um, the example that we see in the booklet there. Okay, so in looking at this example, we're looking at um, a, a, a flask that has a volume of 515 mils and saying at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals, which remember that's our RTP conditions and value that we'll use, saying, all right, well, what mass, so if volume is that, what mass of gas do we have in that container? Okay, so what we need to work out is we need to first work out moles. Okay, so the moles of CO2, so we're going to use our molar volume at RTP. So we've got to convert this into litres, and then we can, so we can say, right, if I've got a container that's 0.515 litres, and I've got 24.79 litres per mole, okay, um, so then I get... 0.0208 moles of gas. And now I can then work out the mass using this value, okay, multiplied by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44 uh, grams per mole, and which equals 0 0.914 grams. Now I realise that that's just pushed off the bottom of the screen a little bit, so I can shuffle that up for a second. Okay, um, so that's how we can use molar volume um, to, to factor into our stoichiometry calculations that we're very familiar with. Okay, um, so go on and complete those practice questions that follow. Um, all right, thanks very much for watching. Hope this helps. Uh, bye for now.